Excellent. So I have the distinct pleasure of inviting our first speaker, our keynote speaker up here, Kia Dunlap from Honeywell. And I'm going to read to you a little bit more about Kia. I personally know Kia and have had the pleasure of working with her for the past few years while she's been at Honeywell and just think she's an incredible leader. I'm so excited y'all get to learn from her today. So over the past 20 years, Kia has been a champion of diversity and inclusion through her work as a global human resource professional. In her current role at Honeywell, Dunlap leads the company's global inclusion and diversity strategy and supports the supplier diversity program, which provides critical business partnerships, opportunities for certified minority-owned, women-owned, and hub-zone businesses, small disadvantaged, small veteran disabled, veteran-owned businesses, disability-owned and LGBT business enterprises, and historically black colleges and universities. Prior to Honeywell, she worked to develop and drive diversity and inclusion efforts at GE and was an active supporter of GE's affinity networks and volunteers. She was selected as one of the 2017 National Women's Council's top 15 business and women in business, earned GE's African Affinity Forum's Icon Award, and was named a 2021 Black Leader Worth Watching by Profiles in Diversity Journal and a top diversity officer for 2022 by the National Diversity Council. I'm excited to welcome Kia, who is going to talk to us about becoming who you always wanted to be. Welcome, Kia. Morning. Can you hear me okay? Awesome, awesome. That is so embarrassing. Oh my gosh. Um, it is so great to see you all here today. Thank you so much for the, um, I sound like I'm echoing. Is that okay? Okay. Um, it's so great to be here in, in the, you know, the elements, but I, as I was telling Jocelyn, it always turns out better than what you expected. So it's, it's great to be here today. Um, you know, I thought I'd spend a few hours. No, I'm kidding. Good, you're listening. This is good. This is good. So, you know, in my role as inclusion and diversity leader, I get to interact and meet a lot of people all over the world, right? A lot of type, um, different types of leaders. And so I, I thought I'd spend a few minutes with you, just a few, um, sharing some of the things that I've learned along the way in my career journey in hopes that it might help you as well. So does that sound okay? A few minutes? All right. So I'd like to start by asking you to do something. I know it's early and you know you just got here in a hustle and bustle. But just take a minute to think about what you wanted to be when you grew up. Take a few seconds, harken back. I know it's just like yesterday when you were young-er-ish. Think about what you wanted to be when you grew up. And now I want you to talk to your, your friends next door, your left and your right, and share that. And I'm curious to see how many of you have the same, had the same aspirations when you were younger. So just take a second. Talk to your neighbor. I know, interact. Okay, 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 enough of that. <laughs> All righty, we know, we know. <laughs> I knew this was gonna be dangerous with you all. First you didn't wanna talk and now you don't wanna stop talking. Okay, okay. So what did you learn? Any of you shared the same aspirations when you were younger? Yeah, throw it out. Anybody share the same? Oh, she's waving to her friend. Okay. Yeah. Veterinarians. What are the odds of that? Oh my gosh. Anybody else? Teacher. Anybody? Teachers, few teachers, nurses, doctors. Ooh, a lot of doctors. Okay. Lawyers. And you admitted it, awesome, that's great, that's really great. Um, diversity leaders, no, 
Okay, that was a little bit of a trick question. Okay, nobody wants to be a diversity leader at, at 10. Got it. So, you know, I grew up in a really small town. Um, any small town folks out there? Like 3,000 people small town? Okay. <laughs> Oh, 1,200, that's, it. see, so 1,000, going once, going once, 1,000, <laughs> 900, okay. Growing up in a small town, and for me, it was, it was the best. I mean, this is a small town in Alabama. Um, I know Alabama has some other issues, but it was really, really great um, for me. Um, everybody sort of looked out for each other, took care of each other. I go back home today, and I'm like a small town hero because they're, you know, proud of whatever success that I've gained. Um, it's really, really cool. But, you know, for me, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to be when I grew up. Right. Um, I was very curious, I, very, I was a very precocious child, so I was interested in a lot of different things. So I didn't know exactly that one thing that I wanted to be, that one thing that I was aspiring to, but I did know who I wanted to become. So not the what, but the who. And that's, that's really where I want to spend a little time today. I was the first person in my family to graduate from college. Any first gens? Any first gens? There's a few. Awesome, right? Um, so again, you know, for me, it was about that who. So I believe that it's not as much what you want to be when you um, grow up. It's more about that who. Who you want to be, who you surround yourself with, and who you support. Who you want to be, who you surround yourself with, and who you support. So there are a lot of books and podcasts and articles and lots of things out there about the importance of knowing your why. You know, why you want to do certain things, why um, it matters, why it's important, um, you know, your purpose. And others talk about the importance of the when. You know, you have to do this before you're X age, right? You have to do this before you do the next thing. Um, or the how, how you manifest your dreams, the behaviors that you have to demonstrate. So I think, you know, all of those things are important, the why and the when and the, and the what and the how. But again, I think it's even more important to understand the who, the who you are and what you, who you want to become when you grow up. And I say grow because we're all still growing, right? I know I am. We're still growing and learning and winning and failing <laughs> and practicing. So that never stops. And so the who you want to be when you grow up is, is even more important than the what, the when, the why, the how. Those things will follow. Who are you when no one's looking? Who are you when everyone's looking? Right? Who are you when everyone else in the room is silent and you have to be that voice that speaks up and demonstrates that courage? Who do you want to be when you grow up? Now, being courageous is sometimes a bit more difficult when you're just starting out in your career. Um, but it's also courageous sometimes when you're already years into your career. Because at that point, you have more responsibilities and more family obligations and, you know, the risks are a little bit higher, right, to make some of those courageous decisions and have those courageous conversations. But I found that once you know who you are and you're grounded in that, then that really gives you fuel to lean into that voice a bit more. So who do you surround yourself with? That matters. Who do you surround yourself with? So does anyone in here have a friend? I know you probably don't. A friend or a colleague or maybe even a family member that's an Eeyore. Oh, you know Eeyore. Okay, great. I wasn't sure if that would really resonate. Okay, so Eeyore, for the maybe one person in the back that doesn't know Eeyore, um, it's a fictional Winnie the Pooh character. It's a donkey. Um, and Eeyore is like the ultimate pessimist, right? He, he is always disgruntled and always has something negative to say. 
Who has an Eeyore in their life? You can, you know, you don't have to point to them if they're in the room, but you could just, you know. <laughs> you know, Eeyore, you know, you come in and you say, oh, the, the sun is shining and the, the birds are singing, and it's a beautiful day. Eeyore would be the one to say, well, it's not as bright as it was yesterday. That bird is a little pitchy. Right? Just always infusing something negative. So who you surround yourself with is really important. Right? Who is giving you energy? On the flip side, hopefully you have someone in your life that is driven. Right? And fueled by this, this amazing tenacity. And notice I say it's not always super positive because life is not always rainbows and ponies and... <laughs> you know, and sunshine, right? But people that can give you constructive input, right? But at the same time, you know, really supporting you and being your best self. So who you surround yourself is important. And then, you know, when you think about who you support, I challenge you, and this might be a little bit tricky with this group, but who you support and who you give your energy to is also important. Even look at your social media accounts. What are you consuming yourself with? The content that you consume yourself with is equally important in terms of who you support. I would challenge all of you today to really take a look at that. Unfollow is a powerful thing. That's a button. That's, that's really cool. You want to you know, really feel yourself and be surrounded by people that are going to really pour into you and give you strength. When I think about the defining moments in my career, those moments that have really accelerated me, uh, they haven't always been easy. But usually, it's a result of someone who saw something in me that I didn't necessarily see in myself. Can anybody relate to that? If you don't have people like that in your life, get one. Get you a friend like that. You know, Tatum's here with me today. I, I call her my ultimate hype woman. So she just, you know, goes along, hey, you're great. You're the best. You can get him. All right, let's do it. You know, but you, know, you need people that can see you not only at your not so best, I won't say your worst, but that sees that potential in you to put you in places and help you, you know, move into spaces that will help you grow. So if you do these things, you think about who you want to be, align your work accordingly, who you surround yourself with, who you support, I think you'll be on the right path to becoming who you want to be. And let me tell you, we need you to be who you are and who you've always wanted to be. We need your unique ideas and creativity, your unique skill sets and talents. We need you. Not a replica of someone else, not you pretending to be, you know, the next person. We need you, the authentic you. Why? Because we need you to help us break down barriers and obstacles to truly drive inclusion and diversity. We know in this room and online that despite making up half of our overall workforce in the US, women are still vastly underrepresented in STEM fields. According to the National Science Foundation, women currently make up just 28% of the STEM workforce. And that's up from a whopping 8% in 1970. So we have made some gains, but there's a lot more to do, and I know I don't have to tell you that. We know that this underrepresentation is also seen in education, with fewer women and girls taking STEM-related courses at school and in college. And we know that STEM fields do not currently reflect the racial and ethnic diversity of our country. Facts. 
So in addition to all of us as individuals, and yes, I'm sort of preaching to the choir because we all know we have to do more. It's the rest of them, right, that don't get it. I'm here to tell you that companies also have a role to play. And I'm really proud to say that IND, so inclusion and diversity, is a fundamental and foundational principle at Honeywell. So when I think about who I wanted to be when I grew up, I knew I wanted to change the world, even at six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, ask my mom. That was a little, you know, interesting. And I knew I wanted to help people. And so as I moved through my career and in volunteer organizations and, and the way I serve in the community, it was important to me to make sure that those things were in alignment. So I didn't focus as much on the, the what, the title and the company and the, you know, those things, sure, they are important and, and we take a look at it. But for me, fundamentally, I have to do work that aligns with who I am as a person. We at Honeywell see IND as being good not only for Honeywell, but good for the entire ecosystem. Our communities, our customers, our business, our employees. And a pillar of our um, corporate uh, sustainability strategy is to increase the number of students in STEM pathways, especially within our underrepresented populations. It's important for us to engage our communities and develop relationships and partners, like DigiBridge and Florix, to work together to shape an inclusive and diverse future. So earlier this month, um, we gifted $1 million to create Honeywell's STEM Scholars Academy at Central Piedmont Community College. Thank you. I didn't even have to ask for that, but thank you, whoever started that over here, wonderful. You didn't think I was gonna come and not talk about Honeywell, right? Oh my gosh. You know, our gift, that $1 million, will fund the academy, providing scholarships and increasing diversity among students enrolled in STEM programs at the college, including engineering, automated manufacturing, IT, and life sciences. We're working with Central Piedmont and the Carolina Youth Coalition to ensure that a minimum of 75% of these scholars will be from minority backgrounds, including female, women, um, black, Hispanic, Latino, Latinx, and others. But we aren't stopping there. A few weeks ago, we announced a donation of 13,000 laptops to E2D, eliminate the digital divide, to help bridge the digital equity gap here in Charlotte. Did you know there's a digital equity gap here in Charlotte? Yes, there is. The donation was valued at more than $5 million and will give more than, wait for it, 80,000 people access to a computer at home. Can you imagine not having a computer at home in today's environment? That's gonna be life-changing and we're super excited about it. So we know that firsthand the digital divide is real, digital deserts are real, and initiatives like this are so important. So companies have a role to play and those are just a few of the examples of what we're doing at Honeywell. So take command is what I wanna leave you with. Um, I'm here to tell you again, don't focus so much on the what you wanna be when you grow up, and again, we're all still growing. The what, the when, the why, the how, all of that will follow. Instead, focus on the who, who you wanna be, and don't wait to see it, be it. Don't wait to see it out there in the world, be it. Take charge of your careers and your lives. So we have this saying at Honeywell, and it's reflected on my t-shirt, um, the future is what we make it. And it really, really, like in my core, resonates with me. Um, I'm like obsessed with it, even before I join. Um, because who I wanna be, I wanna help people, I wanna change the world, regardless of what I'm doing or where I'm doing it, that work should align with who I am, again, fundamentally. At Honeywell, we are committed to a future where all students in the communities 
we serve and all of our employees and leaders can access opportunities, reach their full potential, and become who they want to be. So one final ask, I was gonna ask you to stand up, but I don't know, you might turn on me, so okay, don't stand up. <laughs> but, but just take a minute, just close your eyes for a second, bear with me. And this time, I don't want you to think about the what. This time I want you to think about the who. Who do you want to be when you grow up? Keep your eyes closed. Now raise your hands if what you're doing in life at this moment is aligned with who you want to be. If your hand is raised, then great for you. Stay true to your journey, because again, we need you. If your hand is not raised, give yourself some grace. But now let's get to work. Life is short. Life is short. We need you, we need your voice, and your power in these rooms, in these spaces, in these places. So thanks again. You can open your eyes. Yay, you've graduated the course. No, I'm kidding. I am, um, you know, again, just so humble um, to Jocelyn and the team and all the great work you're doing at Florix. Um, I so appreciate this opportunity. I hope uh, for the three hours or less um, that I had with you today, you took away a couple of nuggets. Um, I know it's always hard in a, in a you know, smart group like this, but it was my privilege, my pleasure. We are open for business at Honeywell, so feel free to see me in the <laughs> if you're looking for opportunities. But thanks so much and have a great rest of your conference.